Mobile payments with React Native. All right, let's get right into it. So hi, everyone. I'm Nofel, phonetically spelled Nofel. And this is what I look like on the internet. That's also what I look like without a beard and what I looked like five years ago. <laughs> and I'm a software engineer at Netflix. So let's start binging. <laughs> Just kidding, we're not going to do that. Uh, so some of you might recognize me from uh, some TV shows like Abstract, where I play uh, a shoe designer from Portland. Or Oksha, where I play a young girl who goes to great lengths to protect her best friend. <laughs> it's a great movie, you should watch it. Or Master of None, where I almost date Aziz Ansari, but not really. <laughs> but you didn't come here to hear about my acting career, you came here to learn about payments. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, more specifically, we're going to go over uh, web payments and see what we can learn from them uh, when it comes to accepting payments in our React Native applications. We'll take a quick look at uh, mobile payments as well uh, to see how we can tie them all together uh, and start charging people in our applications. So let's start with web payments. Uh, so web payments haven't really innovated that much in the past few years or since ever. Uh, as you guys all know, we're still building payment forms these days. Uh, it can be quite tedious. Uh, show of hands, who, who likes building forms? So I count about zero people. Uh, except there's a new API in town called Payment Request API, and that's about to change all of that. Uh, so Payment Request API is an API that allows you uh, to make a request for a payment without displaying a form. Uh, so a native dialog will pop up like this. Uh, where you can show your users what you want to charge them for, so an order summary at the top, along with their saved credit cards. Uh, you can also go a bit further and request uh, contact information or shipping addresses. Uh, and this is available today in Microsoft Edge and uh, Chrome for Android. Um, the demo that you see right now is running in Canary. It's actually going to drop in Chrome, I think, in the next version, uh, which should be Chrome 60. And so let's take a look at the code that powers this. It's actually quite simple. We've got a 30-liner behind us. Uh, so you need to start with uh, declaring a payment method. And so in this case, we have basic card. Basic card encompasses credit cards and debit cards. There's also a way to filter uh, through the cards. So say you only want to accept uh, Visa or MasterCard, you can do that as well. Uh, but we'll look, at it. we'll look at an example later that'll show us how to do that. Next up, you want to uh, specify the display item. So in the previous example, that was a movie ticket that we saw at the top. That was uh, a whopping $32. And then you need a total, which is a, the, which is a sum of all the display items that you have. Uh, so the Payment Request API won't actually do any math for you. You'll have to manually add these up yourself and make sure that uh, they add up. And then once you've done that, we'll take both the display items and the total and we'll stick them inside of a, a details object that we'll pass to the payment request class along with our method data. And so that's all you need to create a payment request. And then you can just attach it to a, a click handler on a button and call PR dot, or your payment request dot show. So th that's actually a promise that'll return a payment response that will contain all the payment details, uh, the contact information, and optionally the shipping address if you've requested it. Uh, and so when you call payment response dot complete, with success or failure, you'll dismiss the payment request. And so for users, uh, what you see behind me is what it looks like on, a, on an Android phone, a warped Android phone. They're actually usually a bit narrower. But um, what it means for users is that they can save their credit cards. They can see a payment summary of, of, of what they're going to be charged. And this includes shipping information, for, for instance. And they can make a one-click purchase. So, so this is huge for conversion. And for developers, what it means is you get a beautiful object containing the payment information, the contact information, and the shipping address, all without writing a single input. And so for, for a lot of you in this room, I'm sure this sounds familiar. This looks a lot like something that we have on mobile, right? Uh, so if you have an iPhone, you probably use Apple Pay before or heard of it. Uh, so you can use Apple Pay in retail stores, but you can also use it within applications. So this is a demo of Apple Pay within an app, again, on a wide iPhone. And so it looks a lot like the payment request that we just saw, right? Uh, here we have a list of display items, a total, um, and a credit card up top. 
And here we have another example. And we have the one touch purchase here. And so if we compare, you can see that they're quite similar. It saves your credit cards, it shows your purchase summary, and it offers a one touch purchase, uh, one click purchase in this case, touch ID for a purchase. And the photo is passcode because I'm using Xcode. So say your touch ID didn't work, you could also fall back to uh, passcode. And for us developers, it also means, again, we get an object, a beautiful object with payment data or payment token if you're using a payment processor like Stripe. You get your contact information, and again, optionally, shipping addresses. And so as React Native developers, this sounds like a familiar story. Um, we already have a few APIs that are quite similar uh, that share a lot of uh, common traits between uh, the web and uh, or mobile platforms. And so these similar stories are things like fetch. When we want to make a network, a network request, uh, we're using the, the web fetch API to do so. We want to request a user's location or to watch a position, we're using the geolocation API. When we want to style our components, we're using the style sheet. And we, when we want to lay them out, we're using Flexbox. So what if we use payment requests to accept payments in React Native. Well, today I want to share a library that I've been working on called React Native Payments in React Native Payments. <laughs> and you can use it today, oh, after the talk, not now. <laughs> and so React Native Payments essentially just like exports a payment request, uh, which is just a polyfill for the web payment request API. And by using it, you can then get payment information that you can charge on your server. You can use a payment processor like Stripe or Braintree. You can request contact information and a shipping address. You can even dynamically update your shipping prices based on the selected shipping address. And so no library announcement would be complete without a demo, so let's um, jump into it in a second after I tell you about more features that you'll enjoy. And so these features are less uh, for the developers, more for uh, your customers. And so they'll never have to, to, to fill out a checkout form again, which means better conversion for you. So Apple's reported that merchants that have used Apple Pay um, have actually increased conversion between 2 and 3%. And it means that you can share your code between your React Native applications and your web applications. Now onto the demo. Uh, so we'll see how fast we can get uh, up and running, ready to accept payments on React, uh, in our React Native applications using React Native Payments. So we'll start off by creating an application. So you guys have all done this before using React, uh, the React Native CLI. So here we're going to run React Native init with the demo app. I'm going to spare you of the NPM install time, or we'll just skip through it. So let's pretend it all worked. Uh, and then we'll install React Native Payments using Yarn, so just a simple Yarn add React Native Payments. You can use NPM, uh, so it would be NPM install React Native Payments. We're all done, and since this library has native dependencies on Apple Pay, uh, we're gonna have to link our native dependencies. And so we can do this again with, a nat uh, with the React Native um, CLI using React Native link, and we'll link our library. And so in the background, this can go into Xcode, uh, and it'll link this library within your project, so you don't have to do it. If you prefer to do it manually, you can do that as well. And so now that our library is successfully synced, there's one more step that we need to do before we can dive into the coding, and that's to enable Apple Pay within our application. And so to do this, you actually need to go into Xcode. Under Capabilities, you'll want to enable Apple Pay. And so in order to do this, you actually need to get a merchant ID from Apple. Uh, so you can do this by signing up for an Apple uh, developer account. And that's the merchant ID that you see selected right there. So you'll have to hang on to that because we'll need it in our JS code as well. And we'll see that shortly. So we'll start off by adding a button. We'll do this by just using the default button that's included in React Native. We'll trash all this boilerplate code and replace it with a button. 
We'll give it a quick title. Let's call it uh, Buy Button. And we'll need an on press handler, which we'll declare within our demo class. All right, so now that we have our button, we'll want to show our payment request. So this demo is going to look very familiar to what we saw in one of the, one of the first slides uh, because it's exactly the same code. Uh, so we'll start by requiring the library. I like to require globally just to replicate um, the behavior on, on the web, uh, but you don't have to set it on global if you don't want to. And once we've done that, we'll jump into the uh, handle press method and we'll start declaring our payment method. And so instead of using basic card, here we'll use uh, Apple Pay as a supported method. And notice how uh, method data is an array. We'll come back to that later. And so for each uh, payment method, you can actually declare um, a data object, which contains information that's specific to our configuration that's specific to that payment method. So in this case, this is where we're adding our merchant ID. Uh, that we grabbed uh, in, uh, in, a, uh, uh, in the enable Apple Pay step. And here we'll filter through the um, credit cards that we accept. And so we'll only accept Visa, MasterCard, and Amex. Then we'll add our merchant country code, which is US, and then the currency that we want to charge in. So this config maps to uh, the Apple Pay uh, API. Next up, we'll, dis we'll, we'll provide display items. So these are the list items that, uh, that, that a user will see under the order summary. And so we'll give it a label movie ticket. This one's a little cheaper, it'll be $15. So under amount, you need to provide a currency and a value. Next up, we'll want a total. So in this case, it would be $15. So here the label is slightly different from the web API. The label that you put here under total is what you're gonna see in, in your Apple Pay uh, dialog as, it'll say pay whatever you put in as, 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 um, as a label of your total. So here it would say pay merchant name. Now that we have the two, we'll put them inside of a details object just like we did uh, earlier on the web demo. And now we'll create our payment request. So you can only create, you can only use a payment request once, right? So that's why we're creating it inside of the, of the click handler. And now we're gonna call show, which is gonna return a promise that will resolve once the user engages the touch ID. And here we'll call complete on the payment response. So when you call complete with success, uh, on Apple Pay you'll see a check mark, like so. And say there was an error in that, in that handler, in your catch, you could just have a failure, and then you'll get an exclamation point instead. So that's pretty easy. In about five minutes we're up and running with Apple Pay. So say we want to go a little bit further and um, request contact information. Um, that's as easy as adding a, an options object. And so here we'll add a key called request payer uh, name. We'll set that to true and we'll pass it into our payment request. And this is all based on the payment request API spec. Now we'll update it. You can also request a phone number so we'll replace the name with phone. And here the error message that you get is phone number required. You can jump in, provide a number if you want as a user. And you can do the same if you wanted an email address. And if you wanted all three, you could do that as well. So that's all cool, but the best part of this library is that you're using the payment request API, which means that it enables code sharing. So you can now write your payment code once and run it on both environments. 
So I'm going to show you how you would do this. So remember earlier when I pointed out that uh, method data was an array? Well, here we're just going to define multiple payment methods. So this is an example for the Apple Pay. The supported method is Apple Pay. And then you can pass it the custom uh, config that you need under data. You could do the same thing for Android Pay if we want to support that. Support for Android Pay is coming soon. It's not quite there yet. On the web, uh, or more specifically on Chrome for desktop and Chrome for Android, uh, there's Android Pay support. And so you could have a web Android Pay payment method. And lastly, we could have our basic cards like we had in the first example. And then we'll take all of these and we'll pass them to method data, which will then get passed to our payment request. So I have a quick demo of um, the uh, React Native Payments example running in both environments. So on your right, you see it running within the iOS simulator. And on the left, you see it running in Chrome. And this is exactly the same code. All of it is shared. So let's see in action. So you can see a total of $15, and on the right you have a total of $15. And so another example would be shipping address. So here we require shipping addresses. And notice the total gets updated once you select the payment method. So if you're looking for the code for this, you can find it on the repo under the examples folder. Um, there are more detailed examples on how to handle shipping and whatnot. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at it if you're interested. Um, after the talk, I'm going to be outside in the hall. So if you're interested in talking about parent request API or the library itself, I'll be happy to chat. Uh, and if we don't catch each other, we can connect online either on Twitter or GitHub under the username at nofill. That's it.